non-profit and has been there in the last uh, since one year. And it is non-progressive, it is migrant progressive, and not reducing our reference to any area. There is no Latin variation to be seen with around two and four to two There is no history of in, uh, no history suggested of any metastasis, no history of muscle weakness, there is no other swelling anywhere on the body. The patient has no history of a similar swelling in the past, no history of any trauma, the patient is now suffering from any comorbidity, no history of prolonged hospitalization or any prior surgery. There is no history of any carcinoma in the family. The patient takes a mixed Indian diet, the sleep pattern of the patient is normal, the appetite is normal, uh, there is normal bowel and uh, bladder function, no history of any substance abuse. With, uh, his verbal consent, the patient was examined in a wellness room, the patient was well oriented to try and take his person. The patient was examined with a supine position. According to Kanopsi, scale, the performance status of the patient was 100. The patient was well hydrated. The BMR of the patient was 23.5 and there was no clinical evidence of any vitamin deficiency. Uh, the blood pressure of the patient was 128 by 72. The respiratory, uh, respiratory rate was 18 per minute and the respiration was proper per minute in size. The pulse was 78 per minute, regular in rhythm, good in volume, normal in character. No radio radius uh, or uh, radio therapy relay. All peripheral pulses were felt. Uh, the patient was apoplastic touch. The patient uh, had no failure, icterus, clotting, or edema. A number of three inguinal lymph nodes were palpable, which were 0.5 cm in diameter. They were globular in shape, firm in consistency, mobile, non tender, non magic. The cervical, axillary, popliteal, and periphyrotic group of lymph nodes were not palpable. Um, on the local examination, on inspection, while the left leg appeared normal, there was a visible swelling in the medial aspect of the upper right thigh. It was 5 into 7 centimeters in uh, size and it was ovoid in shape. The skin over the swelling appeared normal without any signs of inflammation with scars of the histopathological investigation present. On palpation, while the left leg felt normal on palpation, there was a swelling palpated in the medial aspect of the upper right thigh when examined both by making the underlying muscle relaxed as well as contracted. It was, uh, the, the, the size was confirmed to be 5 into 7 centimeters. It was ovoid in shape. The surface was smooth. Margins were palpable. The consistency was hard. There was no tenderness. It was uh, mobile in the relaxed muscle, the swelling. Uh, mobility could not be elicited on a contracted muscle. There was no fluctuation. The swelling was not fixed to the skin, but it was fixed to the underlying muscle. The pulses distal to the swelling were felt. The sensory and motor functions distal to the swelling along with its flexes were intact. The regional lymph nodes, that is the immune lymph nodes were palpable. Uh, on systemic examination, uh, in the abdomen, uh, the abdomen appeared normal with no distension, no hepatomegaly palpated. Uh, uh, the, in the CNS, the higher functions, sensory functions, motor functions, cranial nerves and reflexes were all normal. No nodules in uh, or pain in the bones was uh, complained by the patient. Uh, the diagnosis is the 26 year old gentleman presenting with a painful swelling since past three years is most likely to have a soft tissue sarcoma involving the muscles of the upper medial spine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was. Now, uh, this is for presentation. She's in the first row. I am presenting. It doesn't need to be written because we know you are presenting. And start with Mr. Jairam straight away. And you can exclude even that. You don't need a name. Just say 26 year old journey. Hindu, Vinayaka Bihar, and the student. Fine. Chief complaints. The patient presented to the surgeon Mokri with the chief complaints. No, the slide has just the chief complaints written. The rest you can speak. Patient presented with these chief complaints. Swelling on the medial. It's not in the medial. It's on the medial aspect. Swelling is on. On the medial aspect of right upper thigh since three years. Pain in the swelling since last one year. This is perfectly fine. It's falling into place. Now, the patient was apparently well three years back, which is all right. 
when he noticed a swelling, side, medial side of the upper thigh, insidious, three years, perfect, no problem. Onset progression, special characters, everything very nicely covered. Pain, side is in the swelling, on, onset is insidious, duration one year, and uh, progression is non progressive, severity is mild, uh, severity is not radiating or directly to any area, no diagonal variation with around two episodes in a day. I was very happy that everything was covered beautifully. Now, no history suggestive of any metastasis was also very nicely covered, but for the benefit of an examiner who may expect that you would speak, do mention a few points. That is, no history suggestive of any metastasis like no abdominal status. So that's okay. I mean, I did say that you don't need to, you know, what I, what I actually mentioned at that time was do not Describe it as there is no history of headache, there is no history of visual disturbances, there is no history of bone pain, that's not required. So no history suggestive of metastasis like. Similarly, no, there is history of muscle weakness, no other swelling anywhere in the body and then you know there are lymph nodes, so you are not right here. Now first of all it is not needed and secondly it is wrong. So you bought it for nothing, you are in trouble. You would be wrong when you generally try to overdo. Don't overdo. You don't need to mention that. Patient wouldn't know all about all his or her swellings. It's possible that he also doesn't know what is the lymph nodes. But it's not required. Unless you are specifically saying, say in head and neck cancer, no specific uh, swelling in the neck, a breast, no swelling in the armpit, then you are trying to guide the person into thinking in a specific way. Now, this is a very uh, common statement and the most irritating of the lot for me. The patient has no history of a similar swelling in the past. Now how does he know what is his swelling and then how will he tell you that it is similar or not? So it is not correct. Patient, and I know what you are trying to find out. You are trying to know whether the patient had a sarcoma or some benign disease in the past which has become malignancy now mm. or you are taking a history of recurrence. Mm. You can be direct on that. That is, there is no history of any cancers in the past or for undergoing treatment for any cancers in the past. Otherwise, similar, you mean similar would mean what? Shagun, similar swelling would mean exactly in the right side of, of the same thigh, same side, same place and for that you have to educate your patient into learning about anatomy also. He doesn't know. So similarly, it's a common problem. The patient has no history of similar swellings in the past. You don't get sarcoma so frequently. When you talk about recurrence, then that would be a direct point. No history of trauma is perfect. You must take history of trauma. Why did you take history of trauma? Because it's a risk factor for uh, soft tissue sarcoma. You already decided it is a soft tissue sarcoma. That is why there is a problem. What else can be the Hematoma. reason? Mm -hmm. Sir, it can Hematoma. be to the underlying uh, uh, so, and endocrine and uh, inflammatory swelling. Hematoma, the, the most, most common benign swelling in the muscle, within the muscle, is the hematoma after trauma. Mm -hmm. And that hematoma prolonged, of a long duration, that hematoma may get organized with fibrous tissue around it and that's how desmoid tumors form. That's how lots of malignancies develop. Mm -hmm. And sometimes trauma draws your attention to a swelling. That is also important. So for four reasons trauma is important. One, like a lot of people take that history, testicular tumors also. It may not cause testicular tumor, but yes, then you are yes. excluding a hematoma, mm. which is a differential diagnosis. Yes. And then you are also excluding that it was drawing attention to a sarc or a tumor. And number three, you took it just like that, but don't do the third thing. Patients come for some obstructive, you want to know history of trauma, nonsense, it makes no sense. But here, patient has a swelling in the soft tissue. What is the most common cause of? Swelling in the soft tissue, which trauma. you get every other day, trauma. trauma. You develop a hematoma, which Contusion. gets organized. What can go wrong with a hematoma? Or go right with a hematoma, let's put it this way. It can change with fibrous tissue coming around it, then get calcium coming around it, calcified. So all this will fall into your differential diagnosis. So trauma is important. But importantly, trauma draws attention to a swelling very commonly. So that's good. 
the patient is not suffering from any comorbidities, which you again did not name. I know you saved our time, but don't do that in the exam. You can take exam this time. Tuberculosis, diabetes, COPD, asthma, hypertension, mention that. But importantly for me, diabetes, hypertension, tuberculosis would be important. The rest, if you like, asthma is not really making a difference to me, but you can. Now, interesting family history. No family history of carcinomas. That means there is a family history of sarcomas. So you find that hilarious because you've been so specific. I, I'm glad you didn't mention adenocarcinoma. <laughs> <laughs> Patient will give you a family history of squamous cell carcinoma. <laughs> I don't know, it may happen after 50, 20 years, the way things are going. The patients are reading and Dr. Google is teaching all of them and they're all coming well read. So my brother had squamous, my, my cousin had a squamous cell carcinoma of the thyroid. Oh, great, wonderful. <laughs> well, then he got treated by surgery, radiation and chemotherapy. Excellent. And then what happened, sir, he had response to chemotherapy, so they said, we've Speaking everything that are you a medical student? He said, No. I said, medical students don't speak all this. They are the ones who are supposed to speak all this. So no family history. There is no history of cancers in the family. Which cancers are associated with soft tissue sarcoma and they run in the family? Uh, sir, in, uh, sir, soft tissue sarcoma has basically mutations of uh, the uh, tumor suppressor genes. Good. So, sir, all cancers happen due to mutation of tumor suppressor genes all or mismatch repair genes. I shouldn't say all, but most, a lot of familial cancers. And now it is believed that you all have cancer and it is just that fixing gene which is keeping it from happening. Mm -hmm. The day that undergoes a change, you get a cancer. Now, I often teach this, that the this genesis has started in utero. I think I must have told you also sometime, mm -hmm. the, uh, the cancer has actually started in utero and the time that it takes to show up is the aggressiveness of the disease. So if it takes only 25 years to appear, then that's an aggressive cancer. Vis-a-vis -vis one who's taken 80 years to appear, that's a slow growing cancer. And you know it, when younger people get cancer, it's very aggressive. And this is the background to it. Mm. So therefore take Family history, you were saying something and I stopped there. What what family history? Uh, so you don't know. Anybody would like to answer that? Mr. Sir. Sir. No? Sir. 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 And you, be, you kind of spread an epidemic. You can also come from this space here. Yes. So it has been seen that uh, leiomyoma and rhabdomyosarcoma have a family uh, familiar disposition. So you have to rule that out as well. See, if you just look at the Google and tell me, there will be a mistake. But I'll now ask you another question. Okay. All sarcomas will have some genetic basis. Mm. We need to believe that they are mismatch repair genes and tumor suppressor genes which are undergoing the treatment. But there are some benign conditions which are found associated like neurofibromatosis, mm. there's an NN kappa, there are genes Hypo. which are important. So family history of any cancer is important. Mm. So don't just stick to carcinoma. Personal history, next Indian diet, appetite normal. Now we'll walk very nicely taking your history is not bad at all. I'm just correcting a few things. Now let's come here. History was fine so far. But importantly, what did I highlight? There is a history of swelling in the soft tissue. Mm. So we need to look at it as a soft tissue tumor, not as a sarcoma first. Now soft tissue tumor can be benign or malignant. The common malignancy is of soft tissue tumors, sarcomas, not carcinomas. And benign tumors could be anything from lipoma to fibromas to liposarcoma. No, sorry. Neolipomas to desmoid tumor, which is borderline. Mm. And then you have these changing to cancer or cancer appearing to be no more. And most of the time, it has been seen 
that lipoma does not produce liposarcoma. So cancers appear de novo. Or a large tumor is taken as malignant unless proven otherwise. So you will take a history of both. So they take a mixed history. Verbal consent, patient will please understand this. Fortunately now, I was telling the students who came to the clinics also, most students, especially if it started with my postgraduates and people around in Delhi and India, wherever I take master classes, I make it a point that they mention about consent. You must be thinking that nobody else says it and he's kind of imposing it on us. If you go to a good setup and you don't mention it, you've taken it, it's fine. If you don't mention it, you're failed in the exam. Exams like MRCS, you're marked for, there's a column where you're marked for. Did he take consent? And what does the consent mean? Can I examine you? Please let me know when it hurts. Can I talk to my examiner when I'm examining you? Can I talk to another person when I'm doing it? It's all to be taken. Now, a lot of people, uh, especially from the Indian subcontinent, especially Bangladesh and beyond and all these areas, they will just rattle it out, even if you say, it's all right, it's all right, patient is willing. Because they know you won't pass, because that those marks are important. Now, forget about the marks part of it, it is important to take this concern. Why? You must pay that importance to the patient. This respect should be within you. Don't think you're going to acquire it when you become a postgraduate and when you practice, so it doesn't matter. It will be there or it will not be there. So I like the way she has mentioned. The patient was well oriented to time, place and person, was examined in the supine position. See, was is important here. A lot of postgraduates do that mistake. Patient is this, patient is that, patient was that. According to Karnowski, say the performance status of a patient is 100. That's very wrong. What is 100? First line, what did he say? Symptoms. The moment there is a symptom, it is 90. Mm. If there was no symptom, he won't come. He has a swelling, he has pain, symptom. he can't be 100. So it what is. do you do in future? Call it 90. Sir, the patient said that uh, I was having no problem. Hey, key, mm. Ek hi language Talk it Sir, the patient said he was having no problem. He just went to the hospital to uh, get, her, uh, get his brother checked. So he said, he, uh, I'll also get myself checked from the other It's the WhatsApp word anyway. Now, listen. Your history is all I know. And in your history, the presenting complaints are? Sorry. And pain. Mm -hmm. I don't care what he told you. You told me this. Mm -hmm. If you go by this, is he symptomatic patient? We are symptomatic, it will be 90. And Shagun, to be on the safe side, it is 90. You are 100, he is 90. That's how it goes. He could be 110, I don't care, but <laughs> that day, you are 100, he is 90. Hopefully. Patient was examined in the supine position, perfectly correctly mentioned. Well hydrated, BMI 23.5, no clinical evidence of any vitamin deficiency. Very nicely done. You can see that in trying to be very good, sometimes you do mistakes. And that's where it became 100. So don't get that doubt in your mind. 100 patient won't be in my ward. A hernia patient who walks in and is for his brother's uh, thyroid is also 90. Blood pressure, everything is fine. He has a bright touch, no plumbing, coronary cystinosis. A number of three vial notes. You don't have to mention that. A vial notes are palpable, they're three in number. Globular in shape, form and consistency, mobile, non-tender, non-matted, the swagal agri, popliteal, periodic, lymphos were not palpable. She is specified, but you can say there is no generalized nephropathy. Mm, Same thing is put down as, we discussed generalized nephropathy last time. Yes, sir. And keep that in your head. Mm. Why? Because this, you are taking away a question from the examiner, which you can possibly answer. So say there is no generalized nephropathy. Mm. What would that prompt of the examiner to ask you is, what is generalized nephropathy? So why miss it? So, reasons. throw that question and move on. He'll ask that question. Then answer something, throw another question. Have your 10 questions prepared and your why is over. He's also happy, you're also happy because you didn't trouble him. And you also do well. Good student, do this. And you will do it by the end of the year, I know. You, as you understand, let's say something so that he's asking me something. Mm -hmm. But hopefully something that you can answer. 
there is no local examination in surgery. Local is too local. Local means just that swelling. Examination of swelling. Examination of the lower level. Mm. Upper level. Trunk. Head and neck. Breast. Groin. And what would then be the local examination? Foot. Why the left leg appeared normal? So the thigh was not normal? No, I write along, you're writing leg as a limb. Leg is a part of the limb. I'll show you, I've watched it. While the left, so you would say, while is not required, the examination of the left lower limb is normal. I hope that's what you meant. So it's left lower limb including leg, foot, thigh, knee, hip, plantar arches, everything. So leg is a, just that part. Swelling in the medial side of the right thigh, size this, shape this, skin appeared normal, signs and see, no, no, everything is fine. Palpation, leg. Because every day when you are talking to each other, you call it leg. That's where the problem is, it's wrongly called so. The left lower leg. And it matters here, because we are looking at the thigh. So, I'm feeling bad that I have to pick up some points in a good history and a good examination because I thought this was well done but you can see where you go wrong and uh, you can make a mess of anything actually so be careful there, there was a swelling but now, now the was is over now we are examining palpation left leg normal on palpation left lower leg normal on palpation there is a visible swelling now it becomes present tense because history is past what is history? history is past it is all about when did Akbar come, or when did all those jokers come, and what did they do. That's past. Now, examination is present. Now, there is a swelling in the medial aspect. He's, the patient is still there. We operated yesterday. Medial side of the thigh examined by making the underlying muscle relax as well as contracted. Fine. Nobody would mind that. You're describing what you did. Now, mobile in the relaxed muscle. Mobility could not be listed or contracted. Well, that's called fixity to the muscle. So the swelling is fixed to the muscle. To arrive there, you need to do this. So don't tell me that. Tell me the end of it. Avoid margins, not margin, or margins. Palpable, it's hard in consistency, and you can't have, you calling it hard because there is no fluctuation. You don't have to tell me it's hard, therefore it is not soft. There's no fluctuation. I'm glad you didn't mention translimitation. Because then somebody was describing hernia and then percussion and auscultation and what have you. So we there is some bit of common sense. Although it is uncommon, but use as much of common sense as you can. This will not fit into the scheme of things. It's hard, non-tender, mobile, but it's not mobile. When the muscle is relaxed, okay fixed to the muscle. Why is it fixed to the muscle? Because on making the muscle taut, it doesn't move. Mm. Okay, it, that's, that's the meaning cool. of this. Swelling was not, swelling is not fixed to skin. That should have happened earlier. Mm. Not fixed to skin while fixed to the underlying muscle. I just need this. I don't need this. So that would be how you arrive. You don't tell the journey, here you tell exactly. So that he can ask you again another question. How did you arrive at that? So you lost another question which you could have answered. Whenever you are examining fixity of a swelling to an underlying muscle, I have repeatedly told you there are three stages. One is you examine when the muscle is relaxed. And what does that mean? That examination involves moving the swelling along the axis and at right angles to the axis. But that's your punch. Don't hand it over to the examiner beforehand. So you would mention the swelling is fixed to the underlying muscle, but it's not fixed to skin. Statement is over. My question next, how did you test for that? And then you will say, I did this. So what did I say initially? Muscle is not relaxed. Mm. And you test for mobility along and at right angles. You make the muscle taut, but confirm that it is taut. Very often, when you make the patient 
when the pregnancy major taught, she does some activity, but the muscle doesn't become taut. So if the muscle has not become taut, you're doing a false test. So you'll have to confirm. Part two is confirm that it is taut. And it's important. And third, repeat number one. That is along the axis at right angle. So you made the muscle taut. Clear? The pulses distal to the swelling were felt, which would mean the pulses are present. There is no neurovascular deficit. One line. Now I'll ask you how to test for it. You describe. How do you examine dorsal spedis? How do you examine antitibial? How do you examine popliteal? How do you examine femoral? That's my script. If you read into my script, your questions are reduced. Okay, and the sensory and the motor system is very nicely described, but intact. Intact reflexes means what? Shagun. Sir, we were, um... What is the English meaning of intact? What does it mean? In place. So how can flexes be in place? Reflexes. This term is not to be used. I know why it happens. Similarly, our nail sites are free. Free of what? There is no prison. Their sites are normal. There is no sensory motor deficit. Or there is no neurological deficit. There are terms for it. Intact. No, nerves are intact, muscles are intact, patient is intact, you are intact, that's okay. So, there is no neurovascular deficit. I'll finish there. And then let me be asked what are the dermatomes. So what are the dermatomes alone? You did, you killed it, but I'm reviving it. S1, then, uh, S1 you walk, hold the sole. Mm. S2, immediately. Mm. And S3, you sit down. Mm. Yes, yes, right. Hands in the pocket, that's what I've taught you. Yes, sir. And you should all know it with hands in the pocket. Mm. The right kind of pockets. Mm. Mm. You put my hands in this pocket, it won't be S2, three, four. S1. The side S2. pockets. S2. S3. Two, three, four. S3. Five. S1, sole. S2, immediately. S3, you sit down. Yes, sir. To be asked, and if you answer, you get good marks. Work. And uh, pulses you will feel, dorsal speed is where? Sir, only, um, only upper part of the What is that called? Uh, only, uh, dorsal aspect. Dorsal surface. The dorsal surface is the ventral surface. And uh, if I was to do, I would have put it as upper and lower, don't worry. But then that's not how the world works, you know. The world was here before we came. So, it is dorsal and ventral, or plantar here. Because it is specific. Dorsal and ventral. Dorsal and palmar here. Hmm. Okay? So, it has been done conveniently so that people don't mix things. Dorsal, where? Sir, um, sir it's felt on the. Uh, <laughs> sir, we go along the tendon. Correct. And then the, uh, this will be flexor or extensor? Uh, Naturally extensor. I, I, please don't answer it wrongly. I, I'll, I'll not be very happy. So I told extensor only. Okay, because you're thinking. Don't say flexor. It will be a disaster. Extensor harness is longer. It's going down to the great toe. Mm. You know what we feel about it? So Later. you go lateral to it. Mm. And again what? Uh, against what? Bony margin. The first metacarpal, metatarsal. The head of it. Head. Before it dips, you will feel it. And a lot of people do dorsiflexion of the great toe yeah. to make the tendon prominent. Hmm. You can do that. You go do. along that tendon, just clack into it against the bone. Every pulse against is felt the against the bone. Carotid against C6, carotid, tubercle, shy, shy, next tubercle. Radial against thyroid process, dorsal speed is against the metatarsal first head, and so on. Please sit down. 
So that was done. The regional lymph nodes were parallel. You would say there is inguinal lymphadenopathy or there is a regional lymphadenopathy. Okay? And then you would describe them also. You did not. You described them somewhere else. You should have described them here. So they need to be examined because they are important. You completed the examination of lower limb, which means it starts with attitude, apparent lengthening, shortening, visible changes in the skin, mm -hmm. scar sinuses, visible dilated veins, pulsations, right, deformities. Movement and Mo movements come later. Any ulcers. Sense friction. Any more visible wasting. Mm -hmm. Movements of the joints, neurovascular deficit, regional lymph nodes, examination of the hip damage the spine, reflexes. They are deep and superficial, mm. visual cremastic and plantar, knee and antler, deep. Deep <coughs> Over. So regional lymph nodes, three lymph nodes in the superficial group, or deep group, vertical chain, horizontal chain, you have to describe that, which chain was it? So, three of them in the vertical chain, describe here. 0.5 to 1 centimeter, which you mentioned, ovoid and mobile, not hard in consistency. So when you mention there, you can see we can move without a lot of these. Margins, consistency, I know I just gone back on this, which will explain the margins also. Hard there and fluctuation here, you don't need to mention that. Okay. Now, is it never to be mentioned, so that's not what I'm saying. You're calling it hard because it is hard. That means not fluctuant. Transmutation, oh, sorry, the fluctuation test is negative, mm -hmm. and mostly there is no liquid, no fluid there. So you would not get transmutation. But rarely in a solid swelling, if there is a necrosis of the material, like in cancer, some part could have cystic consistency. Mm -hmm. It's called variegated consistency. There is solid. Cystic, cystic and form. Mm. There you may get it. But Very by and large, a when a swelling is hard, you don't test for, you know, you say it hard because it's, it's not fluctuant, it's not transluminant, so that doesn't need to be mentioned. That will not be required. Similarly, the lymph nodes. Where are the lymph nodes? Nice. Can we describe them? Yes. I saw it, so here there you are. No, they would come there. There are three inguinal lymph nodes in the vertical chain, size 3.5 centimeter in diameter, form in consistency, mobile, non tender, non pendant, everything is correct. So bring it there because that's regional lymph node. So by and large, you saw that the examination was reasonably good. And when you examine the lower limb, always examine the spine. Hmm. When you examine the lower limb, it is necessary, it means it's mandatory. Hmm. Describe the gait. Other features I've already told you. You know, the attitude. Why? Because the swelling is not so large. But if the swelling is very large, they stand with a fixed flexion deformity or they stand with one side, predominantly the pelvis is tilted. There is apparent weight, but there could be shortening, which is not real shortening, but it will be there because of the posture, etc. Clear? Clear yes, to sir. all? Yes, sir. Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry, you and I have not had lunch. I finished my round. You are hungry, be hungry for learning. The 26, the the is not required here you know, because he is just 26 year old. 26 year old gentleman pre presenting is not required, you are finished with it. Three years is not required. So what would you say? 26 year old gentleman with a soft tissue swelling on the in the medial compartment of which side? Right side. Right thigh. Probably a soft tissue tumor. Maybe a sarcoma. Because you'll have to tell me why sarcoma. Mm. This fixed in the muscle. Is it clear? Now, you mentioned soft tissue sarcoma and you started with that heading only. Take it as soft tissue tumor, probably malignant, and it is likely to be. Why is he 26 year old? We are not bothered. That is correct. That's his age. Gentleman part sorted. Past three years is not required. 
from tissue swelling involving the medial compartment. Why do you think it is a sarcoma? Everything is all is explained in this uh, diagram. Excellent. So, uh, it, uh, it is uh, fixed to the muscle. History. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are the features Painful. of malignant change in a swelling? It's a general question. Mm -hmm. Anybody can take it after she has answered. It is her right first. And this is commonly asked in relation <coughs> to many presentations that you have. Why or what are the features of malignant transformation in a swelling? Sir, uh, an increase in size, the painful. Uh, sir, um, is it uh, size to inflammation? Inflammation? I'm talking about malignancy. Um. Okay, somebody else now. Your turn is done. Is that extreme product? See, whenever I ask question, I if I'm a little worried that I won't get an organized answer, I go to him. He's organized it, whatever he has said. It's not a complete answer, but at least you attempt it correctly. Points in history, points in examination. I'll just keep repeating it. Points in history, you have to be careful. Any swelling, you just don't say growing in size or whatever. Rapid increase in size in a short time, this is what he means. Rapid increase. So, it was growing slowly, then it suddenly starts growing rapidly. That's one. Number two, it was softer firm, tends to become hard in consistency, change in consistency. It was painless and it tends to become painful, which is not the kind of inflammatory pain. It's a dull aching pain, which may be due to involvement of nerves. Mm. Nerve, neurotic, yes, neuro, neurologic pain can be different also, root pain. So, it was one rapid progress. Progression in size, rapid increase that is, it's a sign of cancer. Okay. Mobile getting fixed is a sign of cancer. Consistency becoming harder is a sign of cancer. And important thing that he has missed out, infiltration into surrounding structures is mm -hmm. a feature. Like parotid, facial nerve, thyroid, rectal mm -hmm. nerve, and in this case, neurovascular, that's why you examine neurovascular bundle. Mm -hmm. If the nerve was involved, artery was involved, it will go in favor of malignancy. Then on examination, hard in consistency, fixed, or variegated consistency. Variegated means hard, firm, and cystic, all three. So it is an evolving cancer, which is that is, it is becoming from firm, it becomes harder. And dissolving cancer, and from hard, it starts having necrosis. So evolving, dissolving, both cancers, so both sides of cancer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes, sir. So we are talking for all the same. Everywhere it's going to be the same. But organize it in this manner. She'll be able to answer that well. Well, that's your case. So a young man with a soft tissue swelling that is involved in the extremity and it has features of pain appearing later, increase in size rapidly over a short period of time. You try to think in terms of this being a soft tissue tumor, which is looking malignant. So you like to do investigations. Everybody cannot, every diagnosis cannot be made simply based on history and examination. So how do we proceed for examination? This is the case. How do you examination? I'm sorry. How do you proceed now? I don't think that's correct. Yes. Sir, uh, 
to confirm the diagnosis uh, with uh, radiological and histopathological. Uh, then, uh, if you are repeating this, uh, just say date of so that means same time. Yes, I'm not sure. Yet. Not sure. So uh, radiological, you can do MRI because for soft tissue. Slightly you better. Do, yes. You can do MRI and so uh, biopsy for the uh, growth uh, to see if uh, the malignancy status or any, anything else. The to support the diagnosis, the uh, biopsy. Biopsy is to confirm. Okay. Okay. Every time biopsy is to confirm. Because ultimately, whether you read final diagnosis or not, which is, which is Arthur Haley's book, every, every doctor used to read once upon a time, but no, people don't read anymore. So final diagnosis has a pathologist whose name is Pearson. He gives the final diagnosis. That's the book is based on that. And the story of two medical students who are friends, she has a sarcoma of the limb, and he gets her investigated ultimately Pathologists say it's a sarcoma, so she has an amputation. That's the story that will decide the point. So when you say pathology, that's the last thing. Pathologist knows everything, does everything, but very late. By that time, everything is over. Basically, when they refer to that statement, it's mostly the post-mortem. So uh, diagnosis with histology always, mostly histology. Imaging helps you. Now. Anybody who would like to make it better, this is good. To confirm the diagnosis, we will start with uh, the best diagnostic measure is MRI. Uh, for histopathological, we can go on core needle biopsy. Uh, to support the diagnosis, uh, we will do ultrasound or ultrasonography of the surrounding lymph nodes. And we will do uh, x-ray of the abdomen as well as the lower limb, uh, followed by MRI of the lower limb to look for metastasis. Uh, and as you look from the left, uh, sir, in the bony, uh, in please sit down. I'll finish it. Look, first of all, understand a couple of things about soft tissue sarcoma. They are very important. They are one percent of all malignancies, mm -hmm. only one percent, and there are hundreds of types. So you can imagine, it's a pathologist nightmare. So they won't be able to make a diagnosis easily. The efficacy is not done. Aphanis is no role. And whenever in doubt, say core biopsy, anywhere, it's better. So you do a core needle biopsy, preferably guided by imaging. And we don't do ultrasound with high, high ultrasound, you never heard of it. You do Doppler, so. So we do MRI, it's an investigation of choice for soft tissue. But before that, you can do an X-ray of the hip, of the limb. And there's a rule of two in X-ray, they must have taught you in orthopedics, including the workshop. What's the rule of two? Did it teach you? Can you do no, views? No. Oh. Two views, two regions. Thank you. Uh, it's easy and it's a survey of the cat x ray of two joints above and below the one. And two views. Uh, and table stereo later. Fifty percent marks. Two regions. Sit down. Regions. Two sides, two views, two joints. Two regions. Mm. Why two joints? Because there could be a, watch my hand, it's not there on your notebook. Mm. This is the bone, this is structure, mm. and it's rotated 360 degrees. Mm. So you would say it is in alignment, but it is gone 360 degrees. So, you need to see the joint above and below. Yes. In orthopedics, the summary is very simple. Split, one joint above, one joint below. Mm. Cast, one joint above, one joint below. X-ray, one joint above, one joint below. And most of the bones heal themselves. Secondly, two views, AP and lateral, would show the displacement. Mm -hmm. Two views, two, uh, two joints, two views, and two sides, especially children. Because the epiphysis may not have joint, and you may call that a fracture. So you need to compare it, especially, especially supracondylar fracture. You find that epiphysis is not joint, and people call it fracture because you don't do if you don't compare. So we'll do X-ray of the thigh, including upper and the, both the joints, two views, two sides, I've already mentioned. Following that, MRI, core needle biopsy, mm -hmm. and with biopsy, you'll have the type certain. The treatment of soft tissue sarcoma is surgery. Mm -hmm. So soft tissue sarcoma is known to have recurrences very commonly, and I often teach for those who come in the clinics, the three mm -hmm. R's, the mnemonic, 
for soft tissue sarcoma and recurrence, recurrence, recurrence. recurrence and recurrence. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy to remember. And the recurrence is so common that you I have added a fourth R, that is radiation. radiation. So give radiation to all soft tissue sarcomas if you want to prevent. Why is the recurrence so common? Soft tissue sarcoma, they have a pseudo capsule. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, they have false uh, depositions which are called pseudo codes. Mm -hmm. So if you take just the capsular part out, you will be leaving the disease behind. Mm -hmm. So treatment is therefore one plane above and away and one, one plane, plane from the attachments anywhere. Mm -hmm. But you cannot take away vital structures like carotid, vagus or aorta. So there are barriers which are natural barriers like sheets of tendons, Compartment. sheets of vessels, mm -hmm. periosteum, peritoneum, pleura. They are taken as barriers. You don't count two centimeters there. Otherwise, you take a two centimeter margin all around. Take one plane deep, one plane above. In this case, we took out adductor longus muscle from its attachment above, attachment below, and the tumor is out. We don't even look at the tumor. If you can see the tumor, you've done an inadequate job. You can see the tumor if you cut it somewhere. Otherwise, it should come encased in a compartment of muscle. Hmm. And we leave clips in the bed of the tumor so that we can, radiation can be targeted to the tumor bed. So the treatment of choice is surgery, which means wide local excision, as it's achieving R0 resection, resection, which you know is microscopic freedom from disease, yes, followed by adjuvant radiotherapy mm -hmm. or chemotherapy, depending upon the histology. Okay, Metastatic workup, you were wrong. Commonly, soft tissue sarcomas go to lungs and bones, because it's a sarcoma which is a bloody tumor. Connective tissue is a bloody tissue. Mm. The tumors happening are bloody tumors. They spread more by blood. Mm. And when they spread by blood, they go to lungs, liver, brain and bones. Rarely would they spread by lymphatics. Mm. So when they spread by lymphatics, nowadays it is called metastatic disease because by that time it would have already gone elsewhere. Therefore, imminent lymph node description was very, very important. And some people like to do an efficacy of the lymph nodes to know whether there is metastasis or not. Okay. Any questions? That's your soft tissue sarcoma case. But more than that, don't take it as a soft tissue sarcoma case. Take it as a limb swelling. If it is a fibroma, this is a case. If it's a hemangioma, this is a case. If it is a lipoma, this is a case. If there's a fibroma, this is a case. This is the way you present. So there's one way of presenting all of them with subtle changes here and there, especially for intelligent students, it becomes useful. You can extrapolate it in any situation. No questions? Right?